Uh, hey all, uh, just a mic check. Uh, let me know if you're all able to hear. You can just ping on chat to confirm. Great. I believe there should be a feature of raising a hand. You can do that also uh, to confirm something. Yeah. Great. We'll just start in a couple minutes. We'll see if any more participants are coming in. And yeah, we'll start in a couple of minutes. Yeah. I do want this uh, to be an interactive uh, session. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, unmute yourself and uh, please speak. So before unmuting, uh, I believe if you are unable to mute, just raise your hands if you have a doubt or if you have a query or if you have something to speak and then we'll unmute you and then you can speak about it. So just check the unmute, uh, sorry, uh, raise a hand uh, feature and uh, see if you're able to use that. Yeah, so yeah. Great. So if you have something to speak, uh, uh, just make sure you raise your hand so that uh, I can unmute you and then you can speak. So if multiple people, you know, raise their hands, I uh, you know I'll do it uh, top to bottom. So just wait for your turn. Yeah. So if you don't want to speak, you can also always chat. So it's up to you. I believe that's all for today. So let's begin. Okay, so let's start with some uh, fundamental questions of uh, how many of you know SDR? How many of you have heard about SDR? Can you just raise your hands or ping on chat? Great. Very few. The rest of you, you haven't heard of SDR before? Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. No worries. Okay, uh, another fundamental question. Uh, how many of you are uh, coming from an electronics background? I mean, electronics and communications engineering or, you know, something similar to electronics. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, because my assumption is that, you know, if you are uh, studying electronics and communication engineering, I'm sure you should have heard of it. Even CSE should should hear about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Very few from uh, ECE as I can see. Okay. No, uh, SDR, I wouldn't say it is specifically for hacking. It's there as, as a functionality. You can use it for hacking or you can use it for other applications also. <clears throat> I believe, yeah, we also have uh, polling here, but okay, no problem. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay. So we'll start with SDR. Uh, so for those of you who have not heard of SDR, SDR is uh, the abbreviation of uh, SDR is software defined radio. Uh, how many of you have ever uh, used a walkie talkie? At least as kids, you might have used a walkie talkie, right? This I'm sure most of you have done. Now, please raise your hands. I want to see at least, you know, half the audience. <laughs> I'm sure you all have used walkie talkies. And then I'm very sure that, you know, you all have heard radios, right? Radio in the sense, wo mirchi wala. Online, uh, not online radio, the uh, usual radio, right? You have all heard of radios, right? So the difference between that radio and this radio is that, you know, most of the radio equipment you see, uh, the wireless radio. I mean, whenever I talk about radio, I mean some kind of uh, wireless uh, communication. So again, uh, you know, in, in communication, in, in general, uh, you have uh, two kinds of communication, uh, right? Uh, one is a one-way communication, one is a two-way communication. So your walkie-talkie is an example of, uh, you know, two-way communication, right? So you can talk to the other person and then, you know, other person can actually talk to you, right? And uh, when it comes to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, radio, uh, the uh, the usual radio, the daily uh, things in our lives, uh, that is like a one-way communication, which means that, you know, they are broadcasting and we are actually receiving that information and we are converting them into audio and we are listening to that radio, right? So that's, that's, that's what uh, is, is a one-way communication. So what SDR is, uh, it's a configurable uh, radio. So if you want to make it as a listening device, you can configure it. Uh, at a click of a button uh, and uh, if you are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, I mean if, if you can configure it you can uh, make it as a two-way communication device uh, again it depends actually if the SDR actually supports it or not so let me give you a very basic example of maybe a very small SDR uh, we will talk about various SDRs that are available in the market how we we are able to use them and all uh, let me just paste you some links or else uh, wait, I'll just share my screen. <clears throat> uh, please confirm if you're able to see my browser window. You can just raise your hands to confirm. Yeah, if anybody is unable, just let me know. Everybody should be able to see my uh, browser window. Okay, great. So hopefully nobody has any issues. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is a very basic uh, SDR uh, dongle, as we call it. So, it looks, you know, something like this. As you can see, it's a small USB device. So, this is a USB device you can connect to your system. And then, uh, uh, you know, it can, uh, you can basically configure it to listen to, tune to various frequencies. <coughs> so the radio that is in your car or in your mobile phone or inside your, uh, you know, home uh, uh, audio equipment uh, is, uh, you know, it, it's like, you know, it works on a specific bands, right? I'm sure, you know, radio, ko apne, uh, you know, you might have tweaked, uh, you know, here and there to see what kind of bands are available, right? So primarily, if you see the home uh, radio uh, that you uh, da uh, use daily, so you have two bands over there, right? Uh, one is FM and uh, one is AM. So AM and FM are the two bands uh, where, you know, certain frequencies are allotted over there. So it's like, you know, kuch 97, 97 it, it starts with, I believe, 87 megahertz or something like that, right? So from uh, 87 or 90 megahertz, this, uh, say like about 108 megahertz is what 
you should be able to uh, uh, you know listen to this radio right uh, the, uh, the the one that you usually see so the this particular device i'm i'm just showing you uh, you know uh, as you can see in the description i'm not sure if you're able to see i'm just maximizing it so yeah as you can see you can listen to radio signals across a wide frequency so the first uh, you know a uh, small sdrs uh, which will cost you very less so as you can see it only costs you around 100 and, uh, 1931 megahertz right yeah, sorry, 1,931 rupees. So, which works uh, from, you know, 24 megahertz to 1850 megahertz. So, as you can see, this uh, covers FM, AM, uh, CW, MOS code, and, you know, other unencrypted radio signals. So, if, for example, if somebody is, uh, you know, talking in a walkie-talkie, you can actually listen to them. So, and then, uh, Inca, uh, a distance B, it is, it is quite good, actually. I mean, it depends on the antenna that you have over here. So, as you can see, this is a very small antenna but actually you can get uh, you know better antennas actually so if you have a better antenna for example antennas we usually measure in dbis right the strength of an antenna is usually measured in dbi and uh, also uh, we have various types of antennas uh, so we will discuss uh, antennas uh, maybe a little bit later so antennas also matlab bahut sare types so uh, the one that we have to know uh, for these workshops is at least that you know we have something called as an omni uh, directional antenna and directional antenna so which means that you know aapka jo home wi-fi hai uh, for example uh, you have seen i mean everybody has some kind of wi-fi device in your homes right so the one that you see over there is an omni directional antenna which means 360 degrees the signal actually goes out right so the signal is being uh, transmitted uh, 360 degrees so it's 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 a circle that you are actually covering right and then you can place the device in that particular radius uh, to receive the Wi-Fi signals. So, and then we have directional antennas, which means that, you know, they are focused. So, for example, uh, yeah. So, we'll have something like this. So, the applications for both the types of antennas is that, you know, we typically use these directional antennas when we know that you know there is nothing between uh, this device and the other device so but uh, the uh, the advantage of using a directional antenna is that you know you can transmit your regular home signal to up to 25 to 30 kilometers also i mean uh, usually your home wi-fi doesn't uh, even go out of uh, your house right so most of the home wi-fi is like you know jesse he uh, you know you go out of your door uh, you start getting a weak signal and you will disconnect uh, within a few feet, uh, you know, walking outside your home. So these devices that you see, for example, this antenna, I'm not sure exactly how much it is. This is a 23 dBi antenna. So which means that, you know, if there is no... No obstructions, I believe it should go for a minimum of 10 kilometers. I'll just see if uh, its range kya hai iska. Okay, so not uh, this may be. Um, Okay, anyway, you get the idea, right? I don't want to spend uh, too much time over here. So the antennas will look, uh, you know, something like this, which are, uh, you know, directional antennas. Uh, and uh, the one that you see in circular, uh, for example, uh, something like this. So if you see an antenna, which is something like this as a straight uh, pole kind of stuff, it usually means that, you know, this, uh, this is an omnidirectional antenna, which means the signal is actually transmitted uh, 360 degrees. So some hacks we have around it to make this omnidirectional antenna into four, uh, you know, uh, directional antenna is using a Pringles box. Or for example, if you are aware that you can create some kind of shield uh, with an aluminum foil. So in your kitchen, if you have an aluminum foil, then uh, you can basically cover uh, most of the part so that you know it is only open on a single part which means that uh, you know most of the signals will bounce back uh, you know uh, on the aluminum foil and you can make a, a directional antenna 
So people have done this actually. So even we do this. So this image should give you some uh, picture. So what we typically do is that, uh, you know, whatever our directional antenna is that uh, we can take a Pringles box. Uh, the reason why uh, most of the hacking scenarios may uh, even you might have seen in some movies too. The reason why we use a Pringles box is that, you know, Pringles box has an inner uh, aluminum coating. So the uh, internal, uh, the, the box inside uh, the Pringles chips is actually aluminum. So you just have to buy this Pringles box and then, you know, you can put an antenna. And uh, as you can see in this particular picture, so you can focus on a specific direction and then, uh, you know, the range is actually doubled, tripled. Sometimes you get uh, five times the range. So if you are uh, even in a different apartment, you can still, uh, you know, catch uh, somebody else's Wi-Fi signals by, uh, you know, doing this small hacks. Again, the reason we are discussing about this is because, uh, you know, the whole point of, uh, you know, having an SDR or, you know, specifically in cyber security is that, you know, with a uh, little cost, you want to get maximum functionality. That's the attitude of uh, any hacker, uh, uh, you know, here. So the attitude out of any hacker should be like that, you know, with minimum, you should be able to get maximum. That's the whole point of hacking things, right? Otherwise, you know, what's the point? Yeah. So anyway, uh, so this is on the directional, uh, uh, I mean, this is on the basic antennas thing that you should need to know that we have something called as an omnidirectional antenna and you will have something called as a directional antennas. And we have uh, various types in both uh, the things, both in, uh, uh, you know, omnidirectional and in uh, directional, we have a lot of uh, uh, variations inside it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, coming back to our SDR, so, so depending on what kind of antenna you are using and how powerful that antenna is, uh, uh, also you need to, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, the device actually supports that kind of, uh, you know, antenna size. Sometimes what happens is that uh, if uh, the USB, uh, for example, this USB you have, you can't actually connect uh, bigger antennas to this because, uh, you know, the power is not enough. The, I mean, uh, if you if you connect a bigger antenna to this small device, then as you know, USB works at five volts, right? So five volts and, uh, you know, most of the current uh, that's actually flowing through is actually consumed by this chip itself. So which means there is very little energy that is actually being pushed into the antenna. So not much range uh, you will be able to get. So if you want to get a good range, first thing is uh, you need to make sure, uh, you know, you uh, amplify, uh, you know, the signal and then you uh, give it to an antenna, which is much more powerful. So you either get a 9 dBi antenna or a 24 dBi or a 50 dBi or, you know, something uh, even more. So you need to get a powerful antenna to make sure you, uh, you know, uh, either receive a signal which is very long distance to you or, you know, if you want to transmit to a longer distances, then also it's the same thing. So first thing is you need to have a higher amount of power as well as, uh, you know, higher amount of, uh, sorry, uh, much powerful antenna. So the small antenna will not be able to, uh, you know, catch all the signals. So again, I know some basic principles uh, that you need to know is, uh, you know, uh, the frequency and uh, 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 frequency and wavelength, right? So it depends on the wavelength also. As you see, I know the lower frequency you actually go to, uh, the higher the wavelength is. So they both are like, you know, inversely proportional, right? So the higher the frequency you go, the wavelength becomes smaller and smaller, right? So which means that, uh, you know, uh, the for the higher frequencies, uh, the size of the antenna will be much less. So as the frequency goes up, for example, if you if you take a 5 gigahertz antenna or a 6 gigahertz antenna, uh, the, the thing is that, you know, the antenna frequency becomes too narrow, actually. So, which means, uh, you know, you need to focus uh, or we, we call it as a line of sight, LOS. So, the higher the frequency is, the LOS becomes more and more important. So, which means if you're not in the line of sight or if there is any, uh, you know, obstruction, then higher frequencies will not work. So, which is why uh, aapka jo dish, hai, uh, dish TV or, you know, something like that, uh, the satellite TV that you might have uh, in your home, as you know, these antennas, for example, if you see the Dish TV antenna, um, yeah, 
so you might have seen this uh, you know uh, you might have seen this very regularly right so these things as you see if you have ever uh, seen the specifications of this antenna uh, you might be uh, you know uh, reading that you know they work at about 12 to 14 gigahertz or at least minimum 11 gigahertz to uh, maximum would be 14 gigahertz only i don't think so you will find any dish which is more than 14 gigahertz but uh, usually it is between uh, you know 11 uh, to 12 gigahertz or sometimes 12 gigahertz to 14 gigahertz depending on whether you are using atel uh, videocon or you know something else whatever it is so what what uh, service you are using so as you can see what i'm trying to say here is that you know the uh, the higher the frequencies are uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, the narrow uh, the wavelength becomes so for example if you see the low frequency antenna so we call something as loafer not this yeah so low frequency arrays so which means the lower the frequency the antenna size or the radial size of the antenna keeps growing up i mean if you want to catch uh, you know low frequency signal then you need an antenna which which is much larger in diameter so for example uh, why am i not getting good pictures uh, okay okay yeah so this is what i wanted to show you uh, for example uh, you know if you see these kinds of antennas it means the, these are primary i mean these kinds of antennas are uh, typically used in uh, radio astronomy wherein you know they capture very low frequency uh, 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 you know signals so uh, sorry just give me a minute Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, you know, very low frequency antennas will require a much larger diameter. So all smaller frequencies, for example, if you uh, even kilohertz is like, you know, you can capture it, uh, capture it with a very uh, decent size antenna. But if you're talking about hertz, uh, you know, less than kilohertz, uh, less than uh, 1000, uh, uh, you know, uh, one kilohertz or, you know, something like that then you will definitely need uh, you know something of a big very big antenna the reason again uh, what i'm trying to say here is that uh, you know the lower the frequency the uh, the wavelength will be much higher i'm, I'm sure uh, you're all aware of wavelength if not let me just give you a very brief uh, walkthrough See, uh, this is what I wanted to uh, show you. Okay, yeah, um, I hope you are able to see uh, see this image. So as you can see, if uh, the higher the frequency, the wavelength will be much shorter. Uh, you can see over here, right? So which means that you know for higher frequencies, the line of sight would be very much important because uh, in order to catch all of that wavelength, uh, you need to be uh, directional, right? So it it won't uh, it won't it won't work as an omnidirectional for higher frequencies. Whereas lower frequencies it is fine, because uh, the wavelength is much uh, longer. I mean there is a long wavelength, so it's like you know it, it will be very easy for antennas to actually catch this signal. So it uh, so that's that's the whole point actually. Uh, as I said, you know it's inversely proportional. The frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. The longer the wavelength, uh, I mean uh, low frequency. Uh, you can say we have longer the wavelength. I mean, again, these are very fundamental concepts that you know you should definitely know if you want to use SDR because uh, I'm, I'm sure you're all participating in the hackathon, right? So uh, all of this will matter uh, if you want to participate and win uh, good prizes, uh, you know, in the uh, SDR. If you want to participate in the SDR hackathon, so all of this matters. At least in the level three, it, this these things will definitely matter because. Uh, you know, for you, you have to know whether you are using the right antenna or not, whether you have tweak, uh, tweak to right uh, frequency or not, 
whether you are uh, decoding the signals correctly or not is something that you'll have to be very much uh, familiar with again uh, the uh, again the aim of this workshop is not to teach you everything uh, this is to give you what you can expect in the hackathon so that uh, you know you will be ready and you will be good enough uh, you know to participate so after this workshop uh, we will definitely urge all of you to do uh, you know a lot of research if you are serious about participating in the hackathon then i would say you'll have to spend at least uh, you know uh, 15 to 20 hours a week uh, minimum that is on uh, on uh, specifically on the sdrs otherwise uh, you know uh, it becomes very difficult for you uh, for those uh, i mean if you if you are very new to this uh, no we'll not be giving any practical session on the sdrs uh, that is something for you to do we'll only give you the basic knowledge and you know what is what of the hackathons are as i said as i just said uh, what what you can expect uh, from the hackathons is what we will give you what could be the kind of exercises you should be uh, you know prepared for and as i said you should be doing this research on your own we will guide you so we'll be there to guide you but uh, we'll not be giving any practical sessions as such so maybe if uh, you know uh, maybe in the coming weeks if we do plan anything like that we will definitely let all of you know Uh, so that's what, uh, you know, somebody asked, can we catch uh, higher frequencies with uh, low frequency antenna? Uh, that is like, you know, uh, see, uh, antenna, may, there are two parts, right? One is the uh, the mesh. I mean, even I'm not sure of the technical terms. So one is the actual mesh and one is the uh, A and B. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, so see, uh, I mean, technically you can catch, but uh, yeah, you have to tweak uh, each uh, antenna so that, you know, it is able to uh, catch all of that signals. As I said, uh, I mean, if you're talking about a, whether you can catch the wavelength, then you can definitely catch the wavelength. But uh, typically, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't use those antennas because, uh, you know, it's not practical to use a very large antenna to catch, uh, you know, higher frequencies. So the material and all uh, maybe you can use, but uh, as I said, uh, the, uh, 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 the box or, you know, the equipment that actually receives these signals, that has to be there. Uh, uh, because mesh is not important because mesh actually reflects all of the signals let me just show you back okay yeah so the working principle of the antenna is something like this okay so very briefly i'll just say see what actually happens is that uh, you know the the reason i you know why we use this uh, reflectors or why you, we use this mesh kind of thing is that you know the signals are actually reflected so whatever the radio signals are uh, as you can see it's marked as one right so whatever is marked as one these are like radio signals are coming and uh, they are hitting this uh, reflector and the signals are actually focused on to a single point which is this one so as you can see in the diagram the you know the signals come in this way and you know they actually fall onto this uh, you know sub reflector uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, if, if you are uh, using a dish TV, then you can see that, you know, your LNB is actually over here. So the LNB will stay here and, you know, it will catch all of the signals, the reflected signals over here. And then, you know, it will be able to process all of that information, 
right? So in these kinds of large uh, free, uh, large towers, what what you have is uh, you have a frequency that is coming and uh, reflecting over here, and this is again a sub reflector which will reflect these signals onto this third component. So this is where you will receive all of these signals, and uh, you know input is uh, taken. Yeah. So transmitting principle will always uh, be the same. Again, uh, this is only for your information. We are not be using uh, these kinds of antennas for sure. So we'll only be uh, using uh, uh, omnidirectional antennas, which will look something like this. Yeah. So we'll be only using these kinds of antennas. We'll not be using the other types of antennas. That's not required, actually. So this is only for your curiosity. But these kinds of antennas are not needed. At least for our hackathon, we don't need that. Okay, so coming back uh, to the SDS, as I said, uh, the what do you do with uh, software defined radio? As I said, it's a programmable device. You can actually program these SDRs to uh, you know uh, work with a specific frequency, and then you know some of the SDRs uh, you can actually uh, decode the signals there and then itself, so that you know the output uh, to your program uh, can be much cleaner. So this is what an SDR uh, can look like. This is a very low cost SDRs. And uh, uh, I mean, if if you pass uh, level one and level two, and uh, if you if you come to level three, then uh, the kind of SDRs that we give you in this hackathon is is called as a Lime SDR, which will look something like this. It's actually a much much powerful uh, SDR. So in the previous uh, example, as I've uh, shown you over here, it works at 24 megahertz to 1850 megahertz, right? So the range of uh, SDRs that we give you is much, much higher. Uh, for example, let's take this example. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, here as you can see, you can compare both these products. So as you can see, this starts at 24 megahertz and it ends at 1850 megahertz, which is a low cost uh, SDR, <laughs> right? And then uh, the one that we are going to use for our hackathon will be a Lime SDR, which starts at 100 kilohertz. As you can see, it is much, much lower frequency than 24 megahertz, right? So we start with 100 kilohertz and we go up to 3.8 gigahertz. So which means that uh, most of the 2G, 3G, 4G connectivity will be covered by this device. Uh, 2G, 3G, 4G, when I'm, uh, I'm actually referring here to the mobile communications. See the mobile communication frequencies are completely covered over here because uh, if you see the mobile communication uh, uh, you know, frequencies, uh, they are in the range of, uh, they start at 800 megahertz and uh, they use, uh, they typically end at uh, 2900 megahertz, I believe. 29 or uh, 20, no, I believe uh, in India at least it's 2500 megahertz. So that's the highest uh, frequency that is given. I mean, there are different bands that are given. Maybe, you know, you have heard in news that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the telecom companies like uh, Geo, or Airtel or, uh, you know, uh, Vodafone or whatever it is, they actually buy these bands from uh, the government, right? So basically what they are trying to do here is they are saying that, you know, this frequency, I'm buying it for a specific price. I will utilize that band uh, to provide mobile communications and I will charge the users for using that frequency. So that's, that's what is happening in the news. So each country has their own regulations and there are some countries uh, where, you know, governments do not charge, but that's all you know unnecessary information for us what you need to concentrate is that you know for the mobile communications will have a specific range uh, you have you do have to concentrate on the mobile uh, communication frequencies because as i said that there could be an exercise or there could be uh, you know hackathon challenge where you are supposed to connect to a 4g tower and then uh, you know you are supposed to download some code and then you know you are supposed to crack it <coughs> So that these, these are the kind of challenges you can expect. So that is why, you know, we are giving you Lime SDRs, which, which actually uh, work from 100 kilohertz to up to 3.8 gigahertz, right? 
so what we can i mean uh, the kind of uh, you can also expect uh, challenges on the lowest frequencies uh, for example something interesting for you uh, yeah so here as you can see uh, what i'm trying to say here is air uh, air traffic control i'm i'm sure you are all aware of uh, what an air, tra uh, air traffic control is right so the airports basically so the communication that happens between the aircraft as uh, as well as the airport right so those frequencies they actually start after 108 so you you know that uh, you are uh, the radio that you uh, listen to songs uh, i told you right you know it ends at 108 megahertz so after that 108, uh, you know, basically this, this, there is a particular band which is assigned to uh, ATC. So here you can see that, you know, typically, uh, you know, uh, it starts with around 110 maybe in US, but uh, the actual licensed was licensed. Yeah. The licenses that have been given to airports across the world is 108 megahertz to 136 megahertz. So depending on which country you are in or, you know, which airport uh, you're actually traveling to. So there could be some set frequencies. In India, we typically use 124, yeah, 126 megahertz for ATC communication. That is air traffic control. So, yeah, you can actually tune uh, your SDRs uh, programmatically. I mean, it's not like, you know, you have a knob and, you know, you basically turn the knob until you get the frequency. It's not like your uh, audio equipment. You can programmatically tune. Uh, to a particular uh, frequency and you can actually listen to those communications if you if your antenna is powerful and if you are able to catch those frequencies yeah so these kinds of i mean uh, there could be some uh, you know uh, kind of challenges uh, you know you can expect where you have to tune uh, to an aircraft uh, atc uh, frequency and maybe you will get some kind of communication or you know there will be some kind of challenge for you over there so what what i'm trying to say here is that you know uh, whatever the sdr uh, which will be given to you which will be handed over to you that's that's when you come to level 3 so you can expect that uh, you know you you will have to scan all the frequencies uh, and then find out where all the communications are so there could be morse code uh, challenges where you know in certain frequency you'll have to scan and you'll have to find out that you know there is some morse code which is being transmitted a uh, secret morse code which is uh, getting transmitted so you will have to basically capture that information and you know you'll have to decode it and you'll have to solve a challenge so this is what you can expect from uh, the hackathon challenges now uh, what is the kind of softwares i do uh, to actually control this lime sdr or any other sdrs is that there are various softwares one of the uh, common software that you will be using is called a GNU radio. <clears throat> so GNU radio is, is a software that you can install, uh, you know, on an Ubuntu. And I believe it can actually work on Windows and Mac also, but it works perfectly with uh, an Ubuntu uh, Linux system. And also just a word of caution you'll have to be a, a bit proficient or, you know, you have to at least use uh, an Ubuntu Linux because there could be challenges which would require you to uh, do or which makes your life easier when you are using a Linux system. So if you want to participate in Hackathon, it is advised. I mean, it's not that you can do only with Linux. Uh, if you are good with Windows, you can still do it. But yeah, your life will be much more easier if, uh, if you are proficient in uh, Linux operating system because most of the open source tools you will be able to simply download and then you know use them to uh, solve variety of challenges so the SDR uh, you know uh, you will be given an SDR you will be given an antenna and you will have to connect uh, your Lime SDRs to your laptops uh, again in hackathons you are supposed to uh, you know do it on your own laptops right you'll have to bring your own laptops so make sure uh, you have all the possible tools that you anticipate, which are uh, required to crack, uh, you know, SDR challenges. So you can connect the SDR. And then, you know, depending on what challenges you get, uh, you will basically have to, as I said, you, will, you, you might have to scan a particular frequency 
uh, see if uh, some values are getting transmitted uh, if, if if something is being transmitted maybe you'll have to download them and there are also a lot of false positives you will get so you will have to be smart enough to understand what is a false positive and what is not so what i mean by that is that uh, you know false positives in the sense uh, maybe uh, you know the hackathon challenge might come uh, uh, at a frequency which 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 is not being transmitted in real world or which is uh, uh, not being used in real world but uh, for example let's say that you know i give you a challenge in uh, 142 megahertz right so uh, at 125 and 132 i know there is a lot of adc communications so you should not uh, you know uh, uh, you know go i mean you should not spend or you know waste your time on you know real communications of etc and then uh, you know try to decode something or you know try to listen something like that so you have to research on you know what are the most common used frequencies and what are the licensed bands in uh, bands inside india so you you have to have that information with you also so uh, you need to uh, do your research understand what are the licensed bands in uh, uh, that are uh, inside india because whatever licensed bands are there uh, uh, mo uh, most probably will not be using those bands because it is illegal even for connecting a hackathon we can't use any of these licensed bands to uh, provide any challenges for you so so you just need to make sure that you know you are aware of all the licensed bands inside the country so that anything outside of those licensed bands is where you can expect challenges so you need to know what frequencies you should scan for what you uh, what frequencies you should avoid so that you know you don't waste time in uh, you know scanning something uh, that that is you know useless for you so this is some of the information that you have to be prepared for so search for licensed bands inside india try to get uh, try to make a note of all the frequencies you have and as i said gnu radio is something that uh, as a software gnu radio is the primary software that you will be using uh, to control or uh, you know to listen to uh, most of the conversations or you know uh, signals from the line sdr Uh, I'll take some questions now. Let's see. Okay. Uh, as you said, we use larger antennas. Uh, no, most of the radar antennas are not very big, right? They are actually small. I mean, comparatively, it's not as big as radio astronomy, right? Yeah, the reason why we uh, radar antennas are actually not very huge. Uh, uh, they are actually very small. So uh, anything, as I said, if, if it is on a higher frequency, then uh, the comparatively, they are much smaller. But uh, one thing that you need to understand is that uh, uh, they will not be as small as your dish TV antennas because, see, your dish TV is not a transmitting device, right? It's not a two-way communication. It is basically receiving. It is at the receiving end. So radar is not a you know one-way communication, right? It's a two-way communication. It has to send a signal and then it has to receive a signal also. That's how radar works, right? So you transmit a signal. That signal or that uh, you know uh, radio signal uh, hits a plane and then that uh, that has to that that uh, reflected signal has to come back to the radar, right? So that is the reason why you might see a comparatively larger one. Uh, so you need to understand that it has both uh, transmission and receiving end in a same line. So that is maybe the reason why you might be seeing larger antennas, but radars are actually very small. <laughs> so for if, for example, uh, yeah. So as you can see, these are you know some of the radars uh, that you will have. I, I I see that you know uh, you are referring to something like these, right? So these are surveillance radars. So these are typically used by military because they have uh, other functions also. 
but uh, most of the radars as you can see they they are actually small no as you can see uh, 12 to 16 gigahertz uh, you know frequencies you can basically see that you know this is how the radar looks like as you can see this is very small right so radars are usually this small i mean the higher the frequencies the smaller the antennas actually become okay so some good research to learn to save our time so what we'll do nagatan okay good resources in the sense as i have shown you now uh, uh, one thing is for sure in hackathon we'll be using lime sdrs what make a, uh, what model number we'll be using uh, in the lime sdrs i believe uh, that is given uh, once you start participating i, I believe after you cross level 2 you will get the actual information of you know which model of lime sdr you are going to get for uh, research and participation inside hackathon and then as i said the gnu radio is something that you will be using and then yeah if there are any resources i'll uh, i'll paste the links uh, down in the chat box so where can we learn about how to use an sdr uh you can basically google there are various sdr projects so for example we have i will start pasting the links for the next 5 minutes so do take note of yeah yeah for example open source uh, dvb uh, dvb stands for uh, digital video broadcasting so it's like uh, you can uh, actually watch tv uh, you know using a raspberry pi or you connect this sdr to your home system and then you can watch the television and uh, uh, see it's up to you if you want to buy the sdrs or not maybe you can buy a low cost sdr if you can just to get that feel and just to be proficient uh, in uh, uh, you know the sdr or gnu radio at least you know software ke side pe you know if you want to be proficient if you want to test i will definitely suggest you buy uh, uh, you know uh, at least a small usb based uh, uh sdr let me just check if these are available rtl sdrs are one of the very common and very basic sdrs just give me a moment yeah you can buy a hack or yeah yeah uh yeah so hmm maybe you can buy something like this if you can so even if not for hackathon if you are interested in uh, radio communications you can definitely buy this device and you can tweak it i mean you can learn a lot uh, you know on the sdr side so we would definitely wish you to participate in the hackathon uh, for level 1 and level 2 you don't need uh, the challenges does not require you to have the hardware with you because most of them are uh, sdr related but they will be software based challenges 
so which means that uh, primarily they will be related to wireshark uh, pcap based captures or gnu radio based challenges only so level 1 and level 2 so you should have the knowledge but you don't require any sdr to actually solve the challenge so but for the level 3 you will definitely uh, require an sdr again uh, you know for level 3 i don't think so you'll have to purchase an sdr of your own because i'm sure uh, they are actually handing out uh, SDRs for the participants also. But that details will come later. Once you register for uh, the hackathon, you will, I am sure you will be getting all of these details, uh, you know, subsequently. That communication will be made with you, right? But for level three, they will be handing out uh, Lime SDRs uh, to you. And then whatever the challenges are given, you will have to do those challenges on the hardware itself. I mean, hardware and software combination. Mein. So, but for level one and level two, there are mostly software challenges only. Okay, so I'll take some uh, questions. There are a lot of questions. So where can we learn about how we used SDR connect 4G network and crack the code? 4G network is not easy and SDR is uh, used karke. I don't think so you'll be able to crack any 4G network. Uh, 2G, 3G, maybe you can. So uska bhi project se, uh, you can definitely uh, check. Mm. But that uh, 2G, 3G, ke liye, yeah, you will have to buy... Uh, uh, blade rf or uh, lime sdr uh, let me just remember what was that project uh, yeah so i've pasted this open bts.org I mean, that is just a starting point for you, the openbts.org. So that is like, you know, how do you set up a cellular infrastructure with a uh, Blade RF or a Lime SDR is what you can get from an open BTS. So once you understand how the cellular infrastructure actually works, then you can uh, think of, you know, how do you hack into it, right? So do we need some kind of license to listen to? See, uh, license is required to transmit, not uh, listen. So if you want to transmit something or if you are transmitting something, then you have to be very careful. Uh, don't buy SDR and uh, try transmitting something uh, into a frequency which you are not aware of. Because uh, transmitting something on a licensed frequency is illegal. And uh, we have, I mean, throughout India, uh, you know, no matter where you are, uh, whether you are in a forest, whether, uh, you know, uh, you are, uh, you know, uh, on a riverbed, or whatever it is, uh, the sensors are there across the world. It is not only in India. Every country has it and they will be able to pinpoint you in a matter of minutes. So if you're transmitting a signal, then you know they will be able to find it out and uh, there will be a huge penalty. So which is why, you know, when you are working with uh, SDRs, you'll have to be very, very careful because you can cause probable, I mean, uh, what, what can happen is that, you know, the regular communications which are there, they can be jammed. So, which means if somebody is trying to communicate with somebody, maybe he will not be able to because you are interfering with him. So, interference is not at all accepted. So, if you want to test some, then you will have to make a Faraday cage uh, inside your house to basically test something out. But as I said, for listening, it is fine. So, you can listen to any frequency from, uh, you know, uh, any of these bands. Uh, uh, there is no uh, restrictions on listening uh, to any of these frequencies as long as you are not transmitting. So if you just want to be safe, then I would uh, definitely recommend you to buy an RTL SDR. So which is not a synchronous, uh, you know, uh, frequencies or you know, which doesn't have both uh, transmission and uh, receiving uh, in the same end. So Lime SDRs, maybe you have, uh, you know, the shorter versions of Lime SDR that you can buy, which is cheap. And at the same time, you can configure it to only listen. But uh, the higher, uh, the expensive ones of the Lime SDR or, you know, the Blade RF, they can do both uh, transmitting and receiving simultaneously, which is something that you should be very careful with. So don't uh, transmit signals into frequency bands, which you are not aware. So the police will immediately catch you and, uh, you know, there, there will be a huge penalty on you or sometimes jail. So don't uh, play with frequencies that are unknown to you. So that is a fair warning from my side. 
so 20 gb ram and i3 10 gen processor is sufficient for hackathon yeah that should be enough so mostly i uh, you know uh, one advice i would like to give you is that you know most of the sdrs are uh, very latency hungry what i mean uh, by that is that uh, you know if you want to run a virtual machine and then maybe connect the sdr to a virtual machine maybe that will not work for you so unless you have a very powerful system with uh, very good uh, uh, you know bus uh, what i'm bus is something that is inherent to your motherboard so most of the commercial uh, laptops they will not work so if you have a macbook pro you might uh, run a linux virtual machine and then you can connect that sdr to it but again as i said it has to be very powerful uh, motherboard so only some of the mac pros will work uh, the 14 inch and uh, lower one might not work the M1 is very new, so it is not tested. So uh, if you have a laptop, then you'll have to install the Linux on the laptop itself. You can't uh, run it on a virtual machine, then connect the virtual machine uh, to your SDR. It might or it might not work. I'm not sure because I've tested in, uh, I've tested it out in a couple of laptops. So there's a huge latency issue from virtual machine to the SDR. So they may not uh, work at all. So unless I install this, uh, you know, onto my, uh, you know, uh, the host system, uh, most of the challenges may or may not work. Again, that is something for you to test. So if you don't want to take that risk, then I would suggest you have a laptop and you uh, install the Ubuntu system on the laptop itself and not on a virtual machine. So 20 GB RAM is very, uh, I mean, very high. You don't need that much. You require a maximum of 8 GB of RAM and uh, quad core processor would be uh, good enough for you at least four cores uh, whether it is i3 or i5 or i7 or amd or whatever it is i believe four cores should be enough so a four core processor with uh, uh, you know i mean a four core a four core in the sense it can be two virtual cores and two physical cores also so that is also fine so at least you should have four cores in total and uh, minimum of 8 gb ram is what is required to run most of the softwares and uh, to crack challenges anything uh, better than that uh, sh is is going to always help you out so you can also install kali linux os on the host system because kali linux uh, uh, actually comes up uh, with you know a lot of the tools that are already required for you but that is up to your liking so if you like kali os then uh, kali os up although it becomes very easy for you so next question is microwave bluetooth wi-fi etc use 2.4 gigahertz how can we distinguish them with sdr again uh, you know they they might use 2.4 gigahertz but uh, there are certain bandwidths which are given, uh, given inside it right so even in 2.4 gigahertz uh, the you'll have to check the bandwidth so what is the microwave bandwidth what is a bluetooth uh, bluetooth microwave up showed though because microwave you will not be using it anyway uh, yeah, neither you are uh, using the mobile communications uh, nor, nor you are uh, using it to cook your food. So microwave you can leave out, uh, but you know, rest of the things you know that, you know, there are frequency bands assigned. So if you want to know the mobile communications in 2.4 gigahertz, then you can just go to the uh, government of India, uh, Ministry of uh, Telecommunications website, and then you will be able to see what are all the bands that are assigned to various telecom providers in India. So mobile communications ka pura bands aapko wahi pe mil jayega. And then Bluetooth is a very standard one, which is same across the world. So Bluetooth ka bandwidth, you will be able to get those frequencies. Inside 2.4 gigahertz, what frequencies are using uh, Bluetooth is something that you will easily know. And uh, your home Wi-Fi. So that also has a specific, uh, you know, uh, frequencies in the, that, that will be given in megahertz. So under 2.4 gigahertz, there are certain megahertz which are actually assigned for uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, this radio communication so you should be able to distinguish very easily if you have that checklist with you so i would uh, recommend you to make some kind of cheat sheet it's actually available some uh, i i have checked it uh, you know in some github page or something like that so if not you make a cheat sheet uh, you know in an excel sheet may up sub liklo okay what are all which by which bandwidths are being used by which frequencies that will help you easily distinguish what is what uh what is a dipole antenna you can just see the picture no yeah. 
I'm not sure we'll be using uh, dipole antenna for our challenges. I'm just seeing if there are any use for it. Hmm. So no, this is not required for us. So as I say, a dipole antenna is just like you know, which wherein you have two poles on the opposite side. Uh, yeah, where do we have to register for the hackathon? I believe, uh, you know, you, somebody has pasted a link. So sign your Anakshetram is where you'll have to register yourself for the hackathon. Uh, I will speak uh, to the management. I am sure you should get a recording of it. Mobile phones, megahertz in the sense they use gigahertz. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, megahertz is very rare. Uh, we only have 900 megahertz range, 800 to 900 megahertz range, uh, which most of, uh, most of them are not using this. Uh, very old phones, uh, 2G, 3G might work, uh, might still work in 800, uh, 900 megahertz. But most of the uh, 4G phones, they don't work over there. Okay, so your question is, how can I draw a contrast between this and the radar antennas? I believe I've given this explanation, right? So, you see, your radar antenna has a different functionality. So, uh, again, I'm uh, repeating, radar has the functionality of sending a receiver and, uh, you know, uh, receiving it. Uh, and very fastly, there should not be any latency issues, right? So you need to understand that the most important principle or important requirement for a radar is that latency. So the way you can calculate, because you know, radar is clearly use hota hai. You want to track an object that is uh, flying at, uh, you know, Mark 3 or Mark 2 or sometimes even Mark 7, right? So, or, you know, if it is commercial planes, then I uh, you know it travels at a speed of Mark uh, 0.8 or, you know, 0.6 or 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is where, you know, most of your commercial flights, uh, you know, uh, basically fly. So if you want to catch an object which is traveling that fast, then you know how fast the signal has to go, bounce back and get, you know, uh, recorded, right? Your mobile phones are not that fast. So you can actually see that, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of latency between when I actually speak and when you actually receive that signal, right? So latency is not very important in mobile communications. You just need to make sure that, you know, the word goes the other way. But in radar, it's not like that, right? Uh, it, it, it all has to happen in nano or, you know, microseconds. It's not even milliseconds. It has to happen in microseconds. So that is the reason why radar antennas uh, need to be huge so that, uh, you know, they can... Uh, again, one more thing is that, you know, the, the reason why you have larger dish antennas is you want to filter out unnecessary signals. So uh, you can't have interference, but your mobile phones have a lot of interference, right? So which means that, you know, if I uh, if I bring, uh, you know, much more stronger signal, then your mobile communications will get affected. So we can't afford all of that in radar. So don't compare your radar antennas with anything else because radar has a lot of functionalities that it has to achieve. So which is why they are big and bulky. Whereas, as I said, your phone has one specific work and that it can achieve with a very small uh, frequency. That's, that, that's something that you need to understand. So again, uh, just a reiterating, you don't have to buy an SDR for level 1, level 2, but it will definitely help you out if you can buy, buy it yourself. For level 3, again, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've heard that, you know, they will be handing out uh, Lime SDRs for all participants who have crossed level two and have entered level three. So can I buy a hack RF in India? Yes, you can. It's, it should be available in Amazon or it should be, uh, there is a, there is a website called mauser.in or there is tenet technotronics or, you know, something like that, uh, which actually sells hack RF devices. So you can definitely buy. There are uh, four or five vendors in India who actually uh, give hack RF.
So where do we have to register for Akatan? Sign your Anakshetram dot in. The link is there in the chat box. Just check. So yeah, anything else? Uh, yeah, recording sessions should be there, I believe. I mean, these are not, uh, you know, uh, these are actually a repeat, uh, you know, workshops, which means the same content as we discussed today, uh, we'll be doing next week also. Uh, we are expecting new audience to come every week. So there's no in new information uh, that will be provided in the workshops. Uh, it, it would mostly be repeat, maybe with some minute uh, changes. So you can join the next Wednesday or you don't join the next Wednesday. Uh, most of the communication that is related to Hackathon will definitely be uh, communicated with you on your email. So all the communication will be there. If, if we are uh, introducing any new content that you should be aware, then we will definitely inform you on your email. Uh, you please register it on uh, sanyaranakshetram.in and uh, to that email, we will definitely communicate if we have something new to uh, you know say to you. Yeah. So yeah, you have dual boot, then it is good. Uh, you can definitely use a dual boot. But as I said, something has to be there on the host system. Don't use virtual machines because it is not guaranteed to give you results. So sometimes you will just miss a lot of beacons or you know a lot of communications just because you are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, system is not able to process information very fast. Uh, see, licensed frequencies is not, uh, see, licensed frequencies is a different thing. Encrypted signals is a different thing. Don't combine them both. So just because somebody is using a licensed frequency doesn't mean they are using an encrypted signal. So encryption is a different part. Licensed frequencies is a different part. Okay. See, for example, lab jo radio sunte ho every day, radio mirchi or, you know, red FM or, you know, something like that. So those are not encrypted signals, right? So you can make a device of your own and you can actually catch those uh, signals. But uh, Red FM is a licensed signal. So Red FM as a company, they they pay uh, certain fees to the government to block that 106.4 or whatever it is, 102.2 or whatever their uh, frequencies are. So licensed frequency means you have licensed it from the local government, whoever is there. So if it is India, you are, uh, per, uh, you are, uh, you are, you are uh, paying some money to the government and you are saying that you know one or two point four megahertz is what I am going to use. This is my frequency. So you are basically uh, giving money to register that frequency with you. What you transmit on that one or two point four is something that is that is up to you. Whether you transmit encrypted signals, whether you transmit free signals, is all up to you. So one more thing is, if you buy a license, then there is legal protection that will be given to you. So, which means if uh, let's say that, you know, you have bought, uh, let's say 180 megahertz. So you have given some money to the government and you said 180 megahertz is mine. Then nobody else in India can actually transmit on that uh, 180 megahertz. So you can put a case on them and, you know, they'll have to pay a penalty to you. So that's, that's what, that's what license frequencies basically mean. Encrypted signals, as I said, it is what you transmit and it is up to you. So nobody uh, does anything else. So if you're not uh, encrypting your signals and uh, if you complain to the police saying that, you know, he is listening to my communications, then that's bullshit. So nobody will entertain you for that. So if you want to secure communication, encryption is your responsibility, not government's responsibility. So that's the difference between licensed frequencies and encrypted signals. So you have dual core, dual core in the sense, again, as I said, you know, if you have hyper threading uh, in your processor, uh, dual core machines will have two more uh, virtual cores, right? So that should be enough. But again, VM, even if you have six cores or even if you have 12 cores, VMs might not work. As I said, it depends on the motherboard. And I can't say which motherboard will work and which motherboard will not work. So I can't test all of those devices, right? So my advice is that, you know, VM use mat karo. Uh, it may or may not work. But if you have tested it thoroughly and if you think VM is working for you, then it is up to you. So CTF different, yeah, aapko details aapko mein mil jayega. Hackathon mein we are basically conducting three different streams. So you can participate in all three events or you can take uh, only one stream. So participating in all three streams will be very hectic. So I would advise you to choose wisely. So there are three streams that are, uh, that Hackathon is being connected in. One is the software defined radio. One is the secure, secure coding and one is a CTF. So a total of three streams are there and more information is available on the sign here on website.
So will we get access to Cyber Range Labs? Uh, I believe our uh, team will get in touch with you. Uh, yeah, so Cyber Range Labs should be there. You should, I mean, that should be available for you. So SDR with GNU's, GNU radio software, we can listen to any frequency with any type of modulation. So SDR are capable of demodulating any type of modulations. It depends on what type of SDR you are actually purchasing. If you buy an RTL SDR, then uh, they don't have a lot of functionality. So if you buy a Blade RF uh, or you know, something big, then yes. So if, if there is no hardware uh, modulation, then you can do a software modulation in GNU radio also. So that is possible. So, but it, it actually depends key what kind of frequencies you are working with, because if you are working with higher frequencies with a lot of data coming in, then you might require a dedicated hardware uh, demodulation. So if it is lower frequencies, less amount of data is being transmitted. And if you want to do that, then you can do a software decoding also. It's up to you. How do you want to do that? So, but always check ki aapka, uh, functionality kya hai. Uske hisab se, you will have to see whether, uh, you know, hardware modulation is required or software modulation is going to be enough. It, it's very dependent on uh, these factors. So this hackathon is for students and defense personnel. So is it any opportunities for working professionals in cybersecurity? Uh, this I'm not sure. Uh, please put a mail uh, to the support team. So support team ka email addresses you will be able to find out uh, in signeranakshetram.in itself. So they will let you know if you can participate or not. I believe working professionals can also do, but I'm not sure. So best place to buy RTL SDR, Amazon.in or Flipkart, mein hai ya nahi, I, I'm not sure. Uh, just check Amazon.in. So how will we learn new things to participate in SDR? Yeah, see, as I said, you know, my aim of conducting this workshop is to give you uh, some direction and what to expect, uh, you know, in the hackathon. So I believe you have got that information. Now you'll have to do your own research. Either buy an SDR, you know, uh, start uh, researching on uh, the SDR and various softwares that are available inside it. Or, you know, find some good blog posts or links where you can study. Or maybe if you are a university student, maybe <coughs> go to this ECE, uh, uh, I mean, go to a good professor in your ECE branch and maybe they will help you out uh, in, in giving you more information. At least the basic information, they'll be able to help you out. And then you buy an SDR and, you know, you, you start tink tinkering it, you will get to know. Uh, yeah, this is mostly a repeat workshop. So there is very minor content that will be new on the next workshop. But as I said, if you are doing something new, then please register on sanyaranikshetram.in. Then uh, we will give you uh, more information to your email. Yeah, I believe this is open for all students. You must be a student in a university or a college. Does not matter your age. Okay. Yeah. So I believe this is only for students. I'm not sure uh, if a working professional can actually participate. So in any case, you may write to the support team once to confirm. Uh, registration opens in two days, I believe, but a support mail is written. So if you have any specific queries for hackathon, then uh, yes, you can just uh, uh, you know uh, reach out to the support team. Yeah, greatscottgadgets.com. Yeah, definitely. They, uh, he also has some uh, blog posts. Hack RF is created by uh, uh, Great Scott uh, Gadgets only. So you can buy Hack RF from that website directly. But yeah, India may be available. Amazon.in pay, you should be able to find. So please let me know if you have any more questions. Otherwise, I believe we are done for today. We are already over time. So we'll close it uh, in another two minutes. Let me know if anyone has any other queries. Yeah, so I would request you to go to this website. So, yeah. I believe this is a forum uh, where uh, you can definitely log into and maybe uh, be in touch with us for any future updates. Please browse through this website for more information.
so there is no fees for registration that's for sure level 3 sdr i believe uh, you will have to travel down but again as i said uh, that will be communicated on a later date but level 1 level 2 uh, yeah it's virtual okay so level 1 uh, will contain uh, mostly mcq questions only so i can't give you the sample questions but it will contain most of the mcq questions so that is a elimination round the level 1 is an elimination or you know filtration round so where uh, you know you need to have minimum knowledge to enter into the uh, competition so level 1 uh, you know once you are filtered down uh, then you know level 2 and level 3 will have the actual challenges so uh, specifically talking about sdr i'm just repeating again level 2 will contain uh, virtual challenges which means uh, there is some kind of file you have to download or uh, there, there yeah there is always some kind of file that you'll have to download you will have to analyze using the sdr uh, software uh, not only gnu radio there are other tools uh, you know that are available you may have to use those tools to decrypt for example you know some some uh, to uh, some challenges can be uh, you know solved with uh, using a wireshark or you know something else so you need to know which tool to use for what kind of challenge so but uh, the thing is in level 2 you will have virtual challenges only where you will always be downloading a file and then you will be solving them and level 3 of the sdr challenge is where uh, you know the challenges will be uh, requiring you to use an sdr so you'll have to use an sdr and then you either have to develop something on top of it or there will be a challenge uh, file which you'll have to crack using an sdr so it could be anything yeah. uh, again whether it is a team event or not is something that will be communicated to you on a later date uh, uh, when the registration opens so please uh, just log into and you know wait for the updates yeah i guess mr ramarao has said uh, that you know it's not a team event uh, you, you are supposed to participate as an individual Yeah, I believe uh, that question is already answered uh, if SDR hackathons are just for students. <laughs> so you can see the top messages. So they have already answered that uh, you'll have to pursue uh, in a university or a college. Okay, so if there are no further questions, then we are done for today. Uh, I would again urge you to uh, visit sanyaranakshetram.in once again. I mean, there is no limitation whether you can or cannot join. If you want to join, you can join next week also. It, it happens every Wednesday, same time, 11 to 12. Yeah, see, uh, for each of these streams, uh, there are different days where their workshops are planned out. Again, please take a look at uh, sanyaranakshetram.in. You will get more information. So SDR sessions will happen every Wednesday. Uh, CTF sessions will happen on a different day. And secure coding will happen on a different day. So you need to check, uh, you know, uh, which dates and which timings the other sessions are available. I believe so. Uh, please drop a message. If you want a recording of this session. So thank you. Thank you all. Uh, I'll be closing down uh, right now. So if there are no more questions then. Thank you. Thank you all.